So this is gonna be a fun little video. In fact, it'll feel like more of a blast from the past for a lot of people out there. But anyways, Mike and I are currently in the process of designing a studio and we've been uh, doing some inventory before we move everything to the new space. And we came across some really cool stuff, guys. I mean, it actually represents 15 years of Harvard Canucks history or more like 15 years of PC computing hardware. Uh, it's just going through each generation, motherboards, processors, graphics cards. <sighs> it's, it's quite nice, it really is. So we're gonna be showcasing some cool stuff that we came across. Uh, more specifically, the intent for this video would be to give you a little bit of background information on uh, some of these components, uh, the backstories behind them, uh, some of the issues we ran into back in the day, and of course, pop it into a modern setting to see how it actually holds up. If there's anything that you guys want us to check out, definitely make sure to let us know in the comments down below. Perhaps we'll call this series Classic Computing. Uh, I really like that name, but I'm really curious to know uh, what you think about that. But anyways, let's go through one of the first things that we pulled out of the inventory, and that is this massive box. It says, uh, and no, it's not a GPU, by the way. This is an actual processor from AMD, and it's called the FX 9590. This was the world's first five gigahertz processor, and at one point, it even shipped with an AIO cooler to cool all of that heat produced by, well, an AMD chip, of course. You see, the thought of a five gigahertz processor at least seven years ago was pretty mind-blowing, and I have to give huge props to AMD for at least uh, trying something like that, but uh, Mike did mention that he had to go through some challenges as well. So let's uh, let's see if this thing actually boots in the first place, and uh, yeah, go through that right after a quick message from our sponsor. The new Corsair K95 Platinum RGB XT lets you program the six macro keys on the left to work beautifully with Stream Deck for endless customization while you stream or game, plus PBT keycaps, a comfy wrist rest, and a quality K95 body. Check it out below. All right, so let's kick things off with a little bit of history behind the FX9590. In order to get there, we actually have to talk about its roots. You see, back in 2011, the 32 nanometer bulldozer architecture hit the shelves. It was launched as AMD tried to bounce back after their Phenom lineup ended up getting pounded by Intel's Sandy Bridge. Well, Bulldozer performed well in some cases, but it fell pretty short in areas like gaming and some professional applications. And that was a pretty big issue since Ivy Bridge was right around the corner and it used a super efficient 22 nanometer process. So less than a year later, AMD announced Piledriver, which is basically bulldozer, but with some improvements that boosted performance and clock speeds. Sure, it had some challenges competing with Ivy Bridge, but AMD did have one thing on their side, since they were still on an old but mature 32 nanometer process. Clock speeds could have been pushed like crazy, and that's where the FX 9590 comes into things. It had eight cores with eight threads, and no, back in 2013, AMD CPUs didn't have simultaneous multi-threading like they do now, but the FX 9590's clock speeds were the real showstopper. They hit 4.7 gigahertz base and five gigahertz boost. So yeah, it wasn't really a five gigahertz processor all the time, but it could hit that at the right situation. But pushing Piledriver meant some serious power consumption. This thing had a TDP of 220 watts, and that, my friends, required some serious high-end cooling. You see, back in the day, AMD had uh, some issues or problems when it came to mass producing these processors, and so a lot of them went to system builders. If you did end up finding one for yourself, I think the price for that was about $920, for the bare CPU alone. Then by 2014, AMD ended up lowering the price all the way down to $320, and they introduced this. It's the $360 version of the 9590 with a 120 millimeter AIO cooler from Cooler Master. Believe it or not, technically from that point on, AMD's FX 9590 was their flagship CPU until 2017 when Zen was announced. But why did AMD drop the price on the FX 9590 from $920 all the way to $360? Well, they just weren't able to compete against what Intel was offering back then for the enthusiast market. Around that same time, Intel popped out Ivy Bridge E, which had up to six cores and 12 threads with a TDP of just 130 watts. And while the 4960X costs about $1,000, 
the 4930K was about $600, so the 9590 had to be moved down to a lower market. Another issue was their new X79 motherboards. They had PCI 3.0, whereas AMD could only offer Gen 2 on their 990FX. Sure, there were a few rare 990FX boards that used PLX chips for Gen 3 support, but they came with some serious bandwidth trade-offs as well. It really wasn't a good situation for AMD at all. So that about wraps up this history lesson, but we're not done yet, guys, because as I was recording this, Mike, on the other hand, has been setting this whole system up to see if it actually works. So let's go see what he's up to. Oh, you're done your, uh, you're done your own cam. Well, I'm done my own cam. Let all me right. just address this lighting. All right, walk us through what's going on here. Okay, so um, everything was running, everything was going good, but then I realized that the CPU was hitting some insane temperatures. So uh, I ended up listening to this and you know what? I don't think the pump is working on the co included Cooler Master AIO. It would have been really cool to use that. But uh, now I'm installing the U12S, which should be enough for this, I'm, I'm hoping. So um, as I'm doing that, let me talk to you a little bit about my history with this processor. And it, it actually, there's a special place in my heart with the FX 9590. Because at least when it came to the version that was included with the, uh, that had the included AIO, we were uh, the first actually to break that story. And back then, a lot of people were hoping that this new processor that AMD was launching in, in 2014 was actually um, Steamroller, which is basically the revision of Tile Driver. And then after Steamroller, there came uh, Excavator. Those two architectures, or those two revisions to the original Bulldozer architecture, never went into anything but the APUs from AMD. So after that quick little uh, history lesson there, I'm gonna finish installing this. Hopefully we're not gonna get super high temperatures and uh, see where it goes. So uh, let's continue with that. Don't forget to plug in everything, Mike. I know, right? EPS power connectors, motherboard, GPU. Uh, make sure the hard drive is plugged in, by the way. Yeah, um, So we don't grab that. All right, so as we wait for this to boot up and hopefully it's gonna boot up, uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of history with the 990FX motherboard that we're using here, which is the uh, the tough 990FX. This thing for me is like coming home for me because I was using this for a long, long time. And now for me, coming and looking at the BIOS again, this is like coming home for me. It, it's, it, it's like going to your grandmother's place and you have a really simple but really good dinner. There's none of the BS that everybody includes in their BIOSes nowadays. It's just straightforward. So I mean, now that we're in here and I don't think we're really overheating, so at idle, 41 is okay. And we have to remember that Piledriver Bulldozer did not have proper clock gating. So if I'm looking at our power meter right now over there, it's uh, sucking down a good 190 watts. So it's definitely not quote unquote idle. So we're gonna load up Windows, uh, hope everything goes well, and uh, I guess we'll see you on the other side. So everything is set up. We have all of our test programs on here because we're gonna be doing a little bit of benchmarking. And before I talk about what we're gonna be benchmarking, um, we did run into another issue, and that is temperatures. So right now, this processor is under full load and we wanted to make sure that it was stable. Uh, and it's not really stable. It, it is downclocking a little bit past the uh, 4.7 gigahertz. You're not gonna see that now, but every once in a while you, it changes to something like 4.5, 4.2. And you might be wondering why, because you probably saw 61 degrees on the screen right now. Well, the 32 nanometer architecture, it did not like heat. It would degrade over time. So what AMD did is they put a maximum temperature on this processor of 57 degrees Celsius. At 60 degrees, that heat sink is super super hot to the touch so what we're going to do is we're going to change that out to the d15 not get overly complicated i've actually got it out of the box right here but let's talk a little bit about what i wanted to do with the benchmarking and that's really combine the old with the new we're going to get to that right after i get the d15 on so uh yeah we're gonna follow up with some benchmarks right now well guys we've completed the benchmarks on the fx 9590 and, and uh, all the other systems and too. all the other systems and we're going to compare it to the 4930k and yeah. some other some modern... more recent processors yeah. so one of them is the 3950x which basically shows how far amd has come in the last couple of years and we're also going to be putting it up against an eight core intel chip which mm. is the 9900ks which is also their 5 gigahertz chip right now. They yeah. claim it's 5 gigahertz, yeah. but it's the same thing. It only hits that 5 gigahertz yeah. under certain conditions. Sort of like the, the 9590. So starting with the real world results, you can see that the 9590 hasn't really aged all that well. Whereas the 4930K, 
it's actually fighting with all of the other processors that we've put it up against. And some of that has to do with the single core performance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring the single core performance chart in right now. And you can see how badly the 9590 performed. But when you look at that score, it logically shouldn't make any sense, right? Because when you look at the 9590, it can easily hit five gigahertz on the mm -hmm. single core, but then the 4930K, boost to 3.9 gigahertz. So technically, the single core score should favor the 9590, but it's not. No, and, and a lot of that is due to, of course, the underlying architecture. Mm. If the architecture is built in such a way that it can optimize that single core performance, you have something like Intel has been releasing for the last many, many years. But what AMD actually did is something very akin to what Intel did back when the, the Pentium D was around. So what they did is they architected their pile driver, bulldozer, excavator, and steamroller to emphasize on the clock speeds alone. Mm. And not only that is they built it through a multi-core approach. And this multi-core approach and a modularized approach Basically what ended up happening is when it came to single core, the there was like there's a conversation that happens between the cache, between the the modules, the bulldozer modules and everything else and it got all jumbled up due to the Windows scheduler which obviously still hasn't been completely optimized for bulldozer and we're seeing this. And now that really does translate into the gaming results. And with the gaming results, you can see AMD is super, super far behind. Yeah. Now I do have to preface this by saying some of that might be due to the fact that the 990FX platform that we're using right now is one of the many, many motherboards that had Gen 2 support, whereas the Intel X79 had PCIe Gen 3. But at the same time, you can see that AMD is just so far behind in gaming. Yeah. Then again, it really is interesting to see how that situation has flipped now, how they've caught up with Intel, how they've moved past the bulldozer architecture that was a little bit of a disaster for them, and they're now with Zen, and it's really, really picked up steam. Yeah, it's fascinating to see how far AMD has come, which goes to show that hard work and innovation can definitely result to <laughs> positive results. Positivity, people. So, speaking of positivity, I think we're going to move on to some overclocking. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Fire, yeah, fire extinguisher handy. Uh, no, oh, but no. I mean, you've got this, you could just throw what? it in there. I'm not getting rid of my <laughs> hoodie. God. No, it's not it, but all right, all right let's, let's, let's see if this works. Well, he actually did end up bringing a fire extinguisher. I thought he didn't have one, but like... I thought it was a cool prop, but uh, you know, this also makes sure that if this bursts into flames, you don't have to strip down and <laughs> throw your sweater off. Thoughtful. It. He was thoughtful of my hoodie. <laughs> Appreciate Either that. Either way, so this is what we're going to do. Our target CPU speed is going to be 5 gigahertz constant. Uh, I don't think that we're going to be able to go above that if I remember correctly. But anyways, in this platform, you had to take the CPU ratio and multiply it by the bus speed to get a target CPU speed. So in this case, what we're uh, what we're gonna go towards is that five gigahertz by adding a CPU ratio of 25, which is multiplied by the bus frequency of 200 megahertz, which will give you five gigahertz. We're gonna modify a couple of other things, so let's uh, let's get to that too. The settings have been applied, and we're just waiting for the keyboard to light up, which it's not. Hmm. I think there's a couple more settings I want to fiddle with because maybe my memory isn't what it should be. Back after this. One eternity later. All right, so we, we got into Windows and it ended up being an issue with the memory. So I had just messed up the memory timings a bit. So uh, seems like we're good to go. Load up that CPU-Z. I want to see, I want to see that five gigahertz. Five gigahertz. Voltage, 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about, right? right? Let's let's, uh, let's boot up Cinebench and because uh, it just adds to the length. Dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it gave up. All right, all right. So we have a complete destruction. It didn't even reboot. Yeah. So um, we're gonna keep on going with this. It's not stable. So that's the nature of the of overclocking, guys. You just have to modify a couple things here and there and eventually get stability. So on to the next step. Wow, we're running Cinebench R15 right now. And... All right, it completed. It's stable for the Cinebench run, but that bad boy went up to 75 degrees, which I don't know why. It's Cinebench stable. We're gonna check out a couple of other benchmarks, but it is 
right on the bleeding edge. And just so you guys understand what this means in terms of power consumption, so load power consumption of this system without being overclocked was 251 watts for the entire thing. Overclocked, it's now consuming <laughs> over 420 watts. So you add a little bit of voltage, you put it to five gigahertz and it just chews down the power. So that overclocking, that was actually not very fun. So no, it, in, in the few areas that we were able to get it stable in, it did increase performance, but is that almost 200 watt no, increase worth no, it? No, it's not no. worth it, no. But either way, it was. I found this whole thing fun. I mean, it's been a heck of a day. We've been at this basically all day. Yeah, but it's always good to see how far you can push old CPUs. And uh, I mean, Not the fact technically that, old, that makes me really old. <laughs> well, I mean, it's whatever. So what have we learned from this whole process? So I don't think that there's really anything new. I think AMD back in those days was struggling mightily to compete with Intel. Things have very much changed around now, but my bigger takeaway from this is that unfortunately the bulldozer architecture and even pile driver here with the fastest CPU that was released under that architecture, it just hasn't aged very well at all. Even if you overclock the snot out of it, it's still really struggling to keep up with even something like the 4930K. So I think that pretty much wraps up. I had, like I said before, I had a ton of fun with this. Yeah. I so mean, if there's anything else you guys want to take from the collection that we have from the past 15 years, let us know. If it's a graphics card, well, I'm more interested in that. If it's uh, if it's something else. Maybe it's a gaming mouse. Maybe it's, ooh, okay. Yeah, well, ship, it, ship it to Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think about this whole series. And also, I would like to know your thoughts about classic computing. Are you really interested in that as, uh, as something that uh, we, it's something that we want to pursue moving forward. And we'll see you in the next one. In the next one.